hepiniz tekrar hoş geldiniz. Şimdi bizlerle birlikte e, Bucket Games Operasyon ve Geliştirme Direktörü Bilal Balcı olacak. E, oyunların nasıl ilgi çekici yapılacağı, ilgi çekici oyunların diğerlerine göre nasıl hissettirdiği ve oyuncularda nasıl içsel motivasyon yaratılacağı hakkında konuşacak. E, bu oturum İngilizce olarak gerçekleşeceği için eğer Türkçe dinlemek istiyorsanız aşağıdaki e, çevir menüsünden dili Türkçe olarak değiştirebilirsiniz dinlemek istediğiniz dili. Başlayabilirsiniz hazır olduğunuzda. Slide ekran alabilir miyim? Uh, I just want to just leave my comfort zone and just make this presentation in English. Uh, do we have anyone in here who doesn't understand the English and they can just go into the Zoom link that's provided before by the mail so they can uh, listen the translated one? For your information. So, I've been asked by the same question many times uh, in the few months that what is the difference between the top chart games uh, and their clones? So, uh, last, in last weeks, I had many visitors in the bug lab and we were just discussing about the games. And there was someone, uh, he asked me, I want to be an entrepreneur and make a game, a match three game. And he wanted to be the next billionaire for sure. And he asked me that I played many of the match three clones and none of them was as good as Peaks was. And so there was not like the Tomb Blast, there was not like the Star Blast. And he was just curious about what is the reason behind it. So. I mean, what they do, if I hire the best developers, um, can I get that point? And I said, no, actually it is not only about the coding, but it is about the experience. It is about the flow you just make into the old players. And we call that juiciness. But because before that uh, point, let's get some background of how we got this point. Oops, my pointer is not working. It happens in every presentation, by the way. Sure. This is not happening in every presentation. Oops. Yep, here we are. So, the humankind are smart, okay? We have many inventions. And I think, therefore, I am, said Descartes. So, that means actually the dogs or cats are smart as well, but our difference is we know we are smart so i'm aware of my mental capacities and through the ages we made many inventions and the thing is maybe before the uh, 19, 1970s or 60s we were just trying to increase our physical capacities so we have invented steam engine to enlarge our muscle power and we have invented electric light to increase our visual capacities and we have invented telephone so we don't need to send a horseman to another country to communicate right but during world war ii uh, we had a need so the invention comes from a need actually so we needed to increase our computational power. During World War II, and there was an encrypted message problem that the British need to solve. Okay, so they knew the problem and they had to try a millions of possibilities in a day. And our mental capacities wasn't enough to solve it. So a genius puzzle solving man came up with a new invention named Turing machines. So Turing machines will make us able to increase our mental powers. But the thing is, a software is as good as their users. So we need the problem, we need the solution, but we didn't have enough computational power to try each step in a day. So we invented them. And after the wars, uh, World War II finished, 
And after 1980s, everybody was trying to use the computers and there is another problem came into the stage. It is home, human computer interaction. So how people will learn how to use computers, how they gonna interact with the computers. And in 1988, the Carol and IBM computer scientists uh, wrote a paper about this. It, it, is, it was named Fun. And he was arguing about uh, how we need to design the surfers to use and teach the others. So the first idea was it needs to be simple, but the simple is fundamentally come from ease. So it needs to be easy, right? And then they figured out that if a software is easy, so it is simple, yes, it is maybe easy to teach it, but the problem is the people are not internally motivated to use them, so they are using it less and less. But when you put some fun into that software, people are uh, urged to use that software more. So fun comes with a little bit complexity, he says. So if it is so simple and fun, it is like the uh, daddy jokes, right? Or just very, very easy game that you just put a button simultaneously and you just give up in the some point. But in our situations, we want people to play our games more and more. And we call it retention as well. Then we come up to a user experience. So user experience is a little bit different than the player experience, which we will talk about after this topic. So something, everything needs to be designed as simple as possible, but not simpler, Einstein said. So in user experience, simplicity might be more important than our player experience. Uh, last night, I was talking with my dad and we were just having conversation about how life is easy uh, right now. No, no. He, he's about 60 years old. And he told me that there was no telephone. There was no you know, smartphone. So you are very lucky. And you are just living the best times in this, you know, the 2020s. And the topic came out to air fryers. <laughs> he told me that air fryer is a great invention. I, I love it. I just just uh, prepare my meal in 15 minutes. And I was asking that, okay, it's, it's two bourbon, right? And we use two bourbons for decades. So what is the difference between the air fryer and a two bourbon? He says that there is a heat and timer adjustments buttons on it. So what? The two bourbons had it like for decades. And then he told me that there are instructions in the machine and told me that if you want to prepare mail for a fish or for me, for example, it says it's a 15 minutes, 200 degrees, and I just select them and put the button. When it is beeping, I understand my mail is ready. And also it is easy to clean it up, right? And it comes with the user experience design in here. There's something different in the air fryers rather than the tube ovens. It is a design choice, but there is not a puzzle on it to solve it, right? It's not a good choice when you're hungry. And then it's bring us to another topic. What about our play experiences? The user experience might be as easy as possible. No problem in that. But in play experience, we are trying to make it a little bit complex, right? We have uh, core loops, progression loops, we have dramatic art, the learning curves, and we have designed lots of stuff in the player experience to catch that motivation. And we want some people to play our games as much as possible, especially in mobile sector. And how are we going to do that? In 1970s, two American psychologists, the Richard Ryan and Edward DC, this came up with an idea of self-determination theory. So self-determination theory says that we do what we do because of three basic needs. 
and they are driving us to do that behaviors intrinsically. So if you want to be a motivated, the intrinsically motivated, you need to have these three basic needs. And the first is autonomy. Autonomy says that the people wants to do some stuff because they're wanting it. They don't want to be forced to do any act. And in games, we are creating some, for sure, the games have rules, okay? But in games, we are creating some illusion of freedom. So people think that they want to, they're able to do what they want to do. And we give them autonomy. And also, the people has the autonomy to play our games or not, among the others. There are thousands of the games in there. And the second, it is competence. Competence is the people are want to understand what they are doing. They love to do the tasks, the mechanics they understand, and they are just run away from the thing they don't understand. The competence is that we need to give the people exact tasks with a great progression loop and curving curve, learning curve. And in here, for example, in games, we are just giving some mechanics to players and when they master it, when they feel that they are the king of the hill and we give another mechanics in there. So they need to learn it. And we drive their motivation to learn and master the new skill, new skill and a new skill. So we increase their competence to the games. As third, there is relatedness. People need to believe that they are, they are part of the something. They don't want to feel useless. So in our games, they sometimes they connect their them with the character itself. So they think that uh, I am changing this world. I am important for this world. And also the mobile games has the socializing features in that. So the, you have uh, clans for the, in the mobile games. Nowadays it's very trendy. So when they have the clan and they believe that they have some players with them and have the same purpose and they are doing it for uh, something bigger than themselves. And you can see that in the real life as well. There are some people love Apple products. There are some people love Samsung products. There are people love Messi. There are people love Car uh, Roberto Carlos or whatever. And they want to feel to be a part of something. And these three basic needs just create an intrinsic motivation in a person. Uh, for example, uh, the last week, me and my wife, we were just traveling to Eskishe by train, okay? And for me, traveling is my extrinsic motivation. I want to go to see a friend of mine, which is a very close friend of mine in Eskishe. And we were, okay, taking the train to go there. And I was just checking my uh, watch all the time. That's how, when we're going to go there. I, I want to see him. And I want to have a coffee with him. And that's my motivation. And then I checked my wife and she was like enjoying the journey itself. So this is the intrinsic motivation. Just having fun in the journey, regardless of the end reward. And when we give this intrinsic motivation to the players, they will play our games, regardless of what they're gonna, go, gonna have in the end. And how are we going to uh, make this possible? How are we gonna go and say them, okay, you will have an intrinsic motivation in our games and come try it. So there is our topic at last, it is juiciness. So there are two examples in here. Uh, the left one is the dry. So there is a dry hamburger and there's a juicy hamburger. Okay, so which one is uh, urge your feelings? Uh, which ones, if you're hungry, which ones you want to have it? There are thousands of the games and we need to be the juicier one to attract the people to our products. And the juiciness. In 2005, uh, four grad students made a commitment that they said, okay, 
in one semester, we will make 50 games with three rules only. The only games need to be done by one person. They need to finish in seven days, and it needs to be have one team for one game only. Yeah, it looks like hyper casual games. And they just make their uh, commitments and write their experiences. Uh, by the way, it is how to put up a game in under seven days by Kyle Gabler. Um, you should check it. This is great. And then, uh, with the precious outcomes of all their experiences, they named one taken there. There's a juice. And they say that the juice is I wrote that little term for constant and bountiful user feedback, a juicy game element with bounce and wiggle and skirt and make a little voice when you touch it. And a juicy games feel alive and respond to everything you do. Tons of cascading actions and response for each minimal input. So, juiciness is actually feeling good in games and it is creating a fun experience and it is maximum output for minimum input and i will just explain it a little bit more that's what i'm talking about so let's check some examples in here in mario for example why there is a room uh, under the surface that's full of coins right and why there's a trick in here so the developers wanted to put something juicier to create a player's experience. This is a kind of hidden place that when they just explore it, so they will think, okay, I explore something they, uh, the other players didn't explore yet. So they feel and pleasure in here. And you give them a little bit uh rewards with the coins and you give a little bit trick in the other tricks as well for example in here have you played uh, slate spire and there are some juiciness in there juiciness doesn't need to be the vfx only so it is it might be on the text-based game as well but in here says that uh, you find some uh, shimmering mess of light. The mess of light is yellow, right? It is light. So it wants to show us that light is bright. And it's warm and glow and enhanced patterns in my you in. And there's some shake link in here, right? So it is also an example of the juiciness. And after this point, can you see what's happening? It's upgrading two of our cards. And can you see the screen shake in here? So there's a hammer, right? There's a hammering moment in here. And the developers want you to feel it. And they shake the screen. It is the simplest, but I think it works on every time the screen or shakes in the games, it works. And then it is the kind of same example again, the scorching heart, it is like wobbling, right? So this is actually adding some juice into your games. And this works 100% of the time. You are just taking some attention and some point and the players think that you really think about that experience and you are trying to enhance the experience in here. And here we are. I just create a little demo for you and show you how we are. Oops, you cannot see my screen right now, right? Can I get the help? Okay, you just, here we are. Oh yeah, so can, can you see my screen, right? This is a game. Uh, there is a box in here, and there are other boxes that sending some projectiles, and this is our game. And then we're gonna make it juicier together. Next time, 
I just put some colors so we understand who is the bad guy and who is the good guy, right? So I can go through and hit that bad guys. Now I'm just get rid of the squares and put some assets. Okay. And now I have a spaceship and they have their own spaceships and we're playing the exactly the same game, but it looks a little bit different right now. Oops. And then we put a background and we make the player understand that it is a spaceship game. So we are going on the space and trying to do the same thing. Mechanic is the same. Oops, what's changing here? I need to check guys. Oops, oops, oops. Okay, we added the UI, but you cannot see in here, at least in here. Okay, you can see that. Sorry, I was not seeing that in here, so I don't understand what changed. <laughs> So we put some AI. So what AI changed in our game? So we have the purpose right now, right? We have the health. I just put it in the thousand, so I cannot, you know, die in the game in here. And we have a pointer. So I know how many points I got when I hit these bad guys. And then I was moving very smoothly, and I just want to put some in betweening in here. In, I'll just put my sketch in here. So in between is, we call it tweening actually, and it's came from the Juice It or Lose It video, uh, TEDx presentation. And it says that if you design something linear, so there's nothing that linear in the world, okay? For example, in, I don't know if you have any animators in here. If you put an animation, like this it is so linear so it doesn't feel good but if you want to do some curve on the movement it looks better and it feels better it feels more real and increase our relatedness so in here when i'm just moving it is just moving a little bit more when i just leave the buttons and next okay when I'm hitting the enemies, I need some feedbacks, right? So in here, for example, when I hit them, oh, they scale up a little bit. So I understand and feel that they got hit. And it's make my relatedness even more. And then, okay, what if I got hit? Oops, oops, it is wobbling, right? And I'm getting it. I understand that I'm getting it. Now something is happening in here. So we put some feedback on the player hit. And then just put some red. Red always works. It's, it means like harmful something, right? And when I hit the enemies, they got into a little bit reddish. So we understand that they are harmed. Oops. So we're in sky. But when the background is sliding, it also gives us the perception of increasing and progressing something. So we just put a slider in the background. So it looks even better. And then we're just bouncing a little bit. Yeah, can you see that? So I wasn't really uh, satisfied with the heat, heat feedback. And we just put some background bouncing on them. So it is better right now. But the thing is, the juiciness is not only about the visual embellishments, but also the audio. I'm 
Bounce down. Turn this up. Chicken and yep, so I can talk about it. So the personalization is important. The game was a spaceship game, and I just put a ship in here. So I was thinking that okay, this game might be a space ship. So how I can just personalize that a little bit more? So I just put a 16, I just made up the number. I like 16, I don't know. And I said that it might be the spaceship 16, the space shooter game. And I just make the illusion of a uh, backstory. So maybe there is a story that there's a ship and it wants to save our universe from the bad wolves or something. And he's throwing some grass to them and they're trying to destroy them. And we have a story, so we have a relatedness in here. So the player feels that he or she is part of something bigger. And I think that's, oops, I want to mention that this is the exactly same game with the one we saw in here. It'll be just a little bit juicier. So, thanks for your time, and I want to back to presentation, but I'm not really sure if I can do. No, it's not sharing it up. Oops. Yep. Thank you for your time. Um, hope this presentation will be beneficial for you, and please put some juice into your games, and they will be better for sure. Thank you. Uh, we don't have any questions on the Zoom, but like if you still have uh, 12 minutes left uh, for your time. Any so is there any about juiciness? Yes, please. Yeah. What's the most different user experience and player experience between? Can you repeat again? What's the most what? Most difference. Ah, what is the difference between user experience and yeah, the player experience? Yeah, user okay, experience. So actually, the player experience came out of the user experience because you know the user experience was a very uh, historic topic in here. But the player experience is different. The user experience might uh, focus on easy, easiness, ease. So it needs to be you know useful. But I'm an engineer as well. When I'm designing something, I need to think that who going to use it, who going to use it for, and what is the point to design the stuff in that way. So in player experience, we are just aiming something different. We want the people to play our games as long as possible. In UI, you can use some user experiences because it's not the main game, so it needs to be easy, maybe. So it needs to be understandable. But the in games, you need some a little bit complexity. So you need to design that experience a very different than the user experience in, in the classic way. That's what I would say about it. Any questions there? Okay, uh, no questions on Zoom, right, Sardar? No, we don't have any questions on Zoom. Okay. Okay. okay, so thank you for your time again, and bye-bye.